Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Wednesday, January 26th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of charts and how it can be used to build consistency and help you make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Before I get to the watch list real quick, just wanna personally invite you to get signed up for a free live online class that I'm offering in a couple days. So if you're liking what you see here and you wanna learn more about charts, how they can be used, how they should be used and why they are such a powerful tool to build consistency, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, then there's an area right on the webpage that you can click on. So if you're liking what you see, then definitely get signed up for the free class. One quick comment before I get to the stocks. The market is still open for a little bit of time. So this candlestick here that you see, or in other words, the prices over here will still be changing around. I like to do these videos when the market's still open for a little bit, just in case we can capture some really interesting and exciting, uh, you know, late day action. Uh, but the, you know, the, uh, the day is almost over. So it's close enough to being done where the levels and such that I talk about will still be totally relevant as we head into Wednesday. But first one here, ticker symbol SBY to just continue to monitor the overall market. So if you're a new SBY is just an ETF exchange traded fund that measures and shows you what's going on with the S&P 500. So in other words, it's just a way to see what the general markets are doing and a solid day to day, no more, no more, you know, down, you know, new lows or anything like that. However, I'm not impressed and I don't think anybody is impressed or should be impressed from a technical point of view until the price can at least bare minimum get back above that pink line there, which is the very famous 200 day simple moving average. And sure that may be coming here in the next few days, uh, but you know, just because the price went sideways today, had some green, doesn't mean that everything's completely fine. Even if the price does get above that 200 day moving average, you know, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done. My core point here is that there really shouldn't be that much bullishness at all, other than the fact of, okay, that's great. It didn't put in a new low. Cause I mean, it's still down below that area, which I fully expect to act as a very, very stubborn level of resistance currently valued at 442. So keep a close eye on 442 as resistance. That'll definitely be the main area to watch. And then from a support standpoint, just continue to watch these areas of support that I've mapped out previously. So if anything, you could call this uh, a support zone right here. In fact, pretty interesting how the low of today bounced right off that bottom green line right there. But like I said, yeah, today, respectable day. Good to see that the price didn't put in any new lows. However, it really hasn't shown any true swords of power. And you know, you know, the first step of you know accomplishing true power would be getting above that 200 day moving average. Next here, QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ. And, you know, so if you're in, you know, care more so about just the NASDAQ, well, then this is one that, you know, people universally use and same lines of thinking. Th that's great. Don't get me wrong. You know, the low right here was much higher than the low from on Monday, but there, there still really isn't anything impressive that's going on. Even if the price were to bounce, I'm still not impressed. You shouldn't be impressed either because it goes back to the talking point of even with somewhat of a bounce, you can see the price is still quite a bit down below that 200 day moving average. So that doesn't mean that the price is never ever gonna get above that. Of course not. I'm just saying that even if the price bounces up here a little bit, I'd be very skeptical before sitting here and saying, all right, the bulls are back. Everything is still completely fine because even if the price does get above that 200 day, there, there's still even more work to do, you know, because it's still down below that 50 day moving average too, but no need to really put too much focus on that. Let's just first see if the price can bounce. And then second, let's see if the bounce can actually get up above that 200 day moving average, which still valued right around the 365.50 mark. Next one here, AMC, but a quick clarification. I have now transitioned down to the 30 minute time frame, meaning instead of each one of these candlesticks representing an entire day, which is what you were, you were looking at, now each one represents 30 minutes and I'll be doing this time frame here, from here on out. So AMC is the next key one. And overall, day was fine, but there is a, a very big setup that's taking shape here that you know a lot of people, longs and shorts, especially the shorts are gonna be watching right here at that 1550 mark. Nothing is guaranteed, but it's you know certainly a more than valid thought that if the price were to come down to 1550 and break down through it, that that could create quite a bit of downwards pressure. Because yeah, I mean, I state the obvious when I say this, but it is still in a downtrend. I mean, that, that's very straightforward via the moving averages, but just because it's in a downtrend doesn't mean it can't recover back upwards. But if the price does try to recover back upwards, then as I've been talking in the past videos, it's still all about that 50 period moving average, which has a big old track record of rejecting the price downwards. Uh, but as of right now, a pretty modest day, not a whole lot going on. And I don't say that in a bullish or you know, bear, uh, bearish way, but I do say it in a way of, you still gotta respect the fact that generally speaking, it is in a downtrend. And now there's this very well-defined support level here uh, that I think a lot of people will be watching along with that 50 period moving average. So overall, in other words, it's taken shape for a very, very interesting Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday.
Next one, XELA, for those of you that like to play, you know, sub dollar stocks, absolutely monster volume here, beautiful price movement. And what's nice about this one is it has at least pulled back. And I bring that up because, you know, if you're ever kind of paranoid where, I don't know, am I gonna be the sucker that buys the top? Am I chasing the price? Am I suffering from FOMO, fear of missing out? Well, no, that's already happened. The people that were suffering from FOMO, the suckers that bought the top, that was up there. Now, just because the price pulled back doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to be a winning trade. My point is just at least that fear has been eliminated that you're not gonna be buying any sort of, you know, you know, top or anything like that. But it also goes to show why, you know, starting off on, on the, you know, first couple of stocks, the SPY and Qs, why that 200 million moving average is very significant. Because I mean, think about this, a huge move up and up and up and up and oh, what a coincidence right where it got rejected. So again, does that mean that the 200 period can never be broken? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a very, and you can even call it a self-fulfilling prophecy type of area uh, where it, it, prices do tend to stumble around in that area. So moving forward on XELA, that'll definitely be the main area of resistance currently valued at 60 cents as far as levels of support are concerned. Key level to watch if this thing does pull back anymore. It's gonna be right down there around 52 cents. But all in all, you know, to just draw a quick pattern on it, we have the pullback there. We have the momentum move right there. So another way you could, you know, classify this would just be a bull flag pattern. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And we have a, a good example here of, you know, charts and the power of technical analysis. This will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched uh, the previous video. But if you did, talked about that gap close location right there. And then it just so happened that essentially it was a double whammy because that purple on the 50 period moving average kept on coming down, coming down, coming down. And then essentially matched that red line. Not exact, but it, it formed this little zone of resistance. And sure enough, that's where the price ultimately got pushed back to the downside. Uh, but that also reiterates that moving forward now, right around $940, definitely gonna be a very key level. In fact, let's actually do this. Let me move it up here, because if it can get up through the 950 mark, that would also imply that that 50 period moving average has been uh, left behind. So 950, now if you wanna leave it where it was, I mean, I wouldn't argue against that at all. But like I said, just to make sure that the 50 period is also you know passed through, uh, that 950 mark is going to be, we'll call that the main area of resistance. Yeah, you still have this area down here at 875. Uh, but what I'm going to do is actually adjust this level up because in my mind, the more relevant level now is going to be right at there at the 905 mark. So if the price does come down and start to hover around 905, like AMC, you're going to have a bunch of shorts watching that level, watching and wondering, wondering, you know, if the price can break down through that level, is that going to mean there's going to be more downside pressure? And that's certainly a, a valid thought process to have. So keep a close eye on that. But overall, I think those are going to be the two main levels that most traders will be watching. 950 as resistance, 905 as support. Next one, MNMD. A very nice pattern here. And for those of you that like to play the sub, uh, $5 stocks, here you go. Very respectable volume on the day. So we'll see what it has to offer. Uh, but in this situation, what I like about it is just such a well-defined... Oops, let's make that... There we go. Such a well-defined pattern. So you have the resistance right there. You have the support portion right there. And just to maybe make this all a little easier to see, let's make it one color. So we have the resistance, we have the support, we have the momentum move right there. And I'll put a little golf hole down here. So what we would have known as here is a bull pennant pattern. So bull pennant headed into uh, Wednesday here. So if you like to play these sorts of patterns, you like to play this sort of price range, then I'd definitely have this one on your watch list. Next one, SRRA, very volatile one today, big monster mover. And when the dust has settled, two extremely, extremely well-defined levels, which brings us back to the whole self-fulfilling prophecy talking point, meaning that these levels here I'm about to talk, uh, map out, it's not like that I have some sort of special skill. It's not that this is some sort of great discovery. The exact opposite. I assure you people with even a basic understanding of charts have noticed these levels. So there is that self-fulfilling prophecy attribute that goes with it. In fact, if you have you know a little bit of experience, I'm sure you know exactly where I'm going to talk about this area of resistance. And you know that I'm going to draw that line right up there. Because I mean, check that out. On three separate occasions, price got right up there around 2575. So that's going to be a main level. And while nothing is guaranteed, my point here is that if the price can get up there and break through it, it's more than plausible and logical to think that that break could very well create quite a bit of upwards buying pressure. And then on the flip side of things, the level of support that stands out can be right down here at the bottom part of this range, which sits around, we'll call it $21.75. So again, does that guarantee anything? No, but I mean, if the price came down there and bounced from that level, I mean, given it's already happened before, I don't think that would shock anybody. Again, does that mean it's for sure going to happen? Of course not. But does that make it a valid, plausible area to keep an eye on? Absolutely. So watch those couple levels and let's see how this one unfolds on Wednesday. Next, next one, SXTC, another penny stock here. Looking a little shaky. I'm not going to say that it's ruined, uh, but, uh, you know, 
at least you don't have to worry about, you know, the FOMO for missing out. Are you the sucker that bought is buying the top? Nope. Those people are already right here. So if you do like to play pullbacks, then, you know, it is still an interesting play, although it's been a bit of a deeper pullback, but still not completely destroyed. But I would definitely consider that 20 cent mark a very, very important level. And while I'm not saying that this will happen just for explanation's sake, if the price were to come down to 20 and break down through it, what would that be doing to the price? That would quite literally be putting the price right back inside of this range that it just broke out of. And I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but price movements with genuine strength are not going to go back to where they were, right? They're going to make some sort of progress forward. So even if the price came down to 20 and at least, you know, stayed above it and then headed back up, at least at that point in time, you'd have a set of lows there. You'd have lows down there. You envision those as stair steps and you'd still have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. So 20 cents, I would say, is, is definitely a very key level of support from resistance side of things. Main area to watch going to be right up there at the 25 cent mark. Uh, but as of right now, given the price isn't really anywhere close to 25, I think the more uh, pressing idea and, you know, talking point is more so, you know, is the price going to test 20? And if it does, can it hold? So let's see how the next couple of days play out. Next one, SDC. Very, very impressive move today on the good amount of volume. And, you know, in fact, the last 30 minutes here, you can see good, strong final 30 minutes. Nice green candle here forming. Uh, it's not going to close at highs, but it's definitely close to breaking out of the potentially that next key level. And this is why I like this chart a whole lot, because once again, it goes back to the whole self-fulfilling prophecy dynamic. Look at that. I guarantee you a bunch of people have noticed, hey, look, it got rejected at 255 several days ago. Hey, look, it got rejected at 255 again. Once again, does that guarantee anything? No, but does it make it a valid, plausible thought process to think that if the price gets up there and can break through that level, that could very well create additional good solid buying pressure yes that's absolutely a plausible and valid thought process to have so keep a close eye on 250 as far as areas of support are concerned if you like to play pullbacks then an interesting area for a pullback right down there around 227 but all in all fantastic movement fantastic volume today so we'll see if the momentum can continue over the next couple of days and again that starts with the 255 area Next one, PROG, very, very impressive move today. Uh, you know, when you stop and think about the fact that it was just hovering down there on Monday and now all of a sudden all the way up here, quite a bit of momentum. And it goes back to the whole talking point. Hey, at least it's pulled back. So the, the people that were suffering FOMO, FOMO, you know, the people that chase, they were buying right there. So you're going to want to keep a, a close eye on this one, assuming you like the price range and like to play these dynamics where you have momentum, but now there's been a bit of a pullback. Now, maybe you're saying, I don't know, that, that's not really much of a pullback. And, and I can understand that. If you want more of a pullback, then I could see this right here being more of a logical area around the 147 mark. But who? maybe you're saying, what are you talking about? That, that's plenty pullback for me. And that's great. We're all different, right? We all have little different rules, personal risk tolerances. Uh, but the general idea here is that clearly a lot of momentum showed up today. And now there's been a little bit of a pullback within the momentum. So if you like to play those sorts of setups, uh, then this one would be for you. And then from more of an overarching standpoint, not completely relevant right now, but if this momentum does you know, keep going, then you're gonna wanna keep a very close eye on that 50, or excuse me, 200 period moving average, which we've talked about several times now, all the way up there currently valued at the 171 mark. Um, so again, it's not immediately relevant, but if the momentum does continue, then you're gonna wanna keep an eye on that from the resistance side of things. But overall, very nice setup if you like to play these sorts of situations down in this price range. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here, you want to learn more about the tool of technical analysis, how it can be used, how it should be used, and why it is just so powerful to help traders build consistency with their results, then certainly get signed up for the free class. Like I said, it'll be a couple days, Thursday, January 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So get signed up, uh, you know, whether it's in the description box on YouTube or just click on the area on the website. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, if you would like for me to continue to make these videos, then please help me out with some basic communication. Hit the like button, leave a simple comment down below, say hi, give me an emoji, tell me what you traded today, tell me what you're watching tomorrow. But those two things, hitting the like button, leaving a simple comment, go a long way in communicating to me that you enjoy these videos. And as long as I know people are enjoying, I will gladly continue to make them. So again, if you wanna learn more about this tool, how to use it to build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Everybody take care, have a good one.